Do you know the old saying, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me? Me too. But my version goes, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will eventually hurt me. I'm in second grade. It's a Wednesday night in the Bronx. My brother and I are prancing around the living room. Our combined energy, com our combined energy brightens the room. We're laughing, screaming, having so much fun. The weekend is almost near. It's innocent. We're not thinking about right or wrong. Dad has just come home from a long work shift and is trying to get some sleep. He comes out and asks us to stop making noise, but we don't stop. We're not trying to be disobedient. We're just restless. We're aching to release this youthful energy. Around the table we go, in circles, running, 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 faster and faster. The floor starts to erupt under our footsteps like a packed Broadway show. But we don't realize just how much noise we're making before it's too late. Then, the door open, footsteps. The weak floor sounds like a creak in a horror movie. My heart sinks. We quickly sit down in chairs around the table, a suicidal game of musical chairs. I try to control and lower my breath, but it's too late. Huffing and puffing, I look up as my father enters. I stare into his angry eyes. I know what's coming. Don't say anything, just open your hands. As the bell connects with my palm, I wince from the pain, but it's over quickly. All of our energy has been snuffed right out of us. It's 7.30 the next morning and I'm off to school. My hands are still burning. As I adjust the collar on the top of my vest, all I can think about is guilt. Dad warned us to stop, but we didn't. I'm in English class, first period. It's the first time I'm able to spell the word secondly correctly. I'm proud of myself. I show a classmate sitting next to me how to write it. Hey, S-E-C-O-N-D-L-Y, secondly. I tell him as I smile the first time since last night. As I sit down at my desk, I feel my hands, the burning, the burning sensation still throbbing. I can barely hold the pencil as my C in secondly starts to look like a sad letter S. I hear my parents in my head. Whatever happens in the house stays in the house. Sometimes I forget this rule. I'm in math class trying to think about how to add cubes together, counting colored blocks. As my fingers struggled to grip the cubes, once again, my little second grade body thinks about the trouble I got into last night. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but not just my bones. My heart is broken. I decide to tell someone about what happened, but who? I'm nervous. I get up to tell my teacher. Next thing I know, I'm in Ms. Rosario's office. She's a guidance counselor, but acts more like a dean. Her rosy cheek smile is five inches from my face. She keeps repeating, everything's gonna be okay, over and over. I feel the silence all around me, just me and my thoughts. I try to be strong. I tell myself I won't talk. Time moves slowly. I just want to be back in my math class, counting colored blocks. But no matter how much I blink or mutter random spells under my breath to disappear, Ms. Rosario's rosy cheek smiled, patiently waits for me to open my lips and say what happened. Was it your dad? I look up in shock, right into Ms. Rosario's eyes. The spell disappears. I wonder how she knows. I stop blinking. I feel perspiration sliding down my fingers. My shoes, one size too small, feels tight. And most of all, I feel defeated. I don't know what happens next. Maybe I said yes, maybe I nodded, but I'm sent back to class. What happened in our house didn't stay in our house. I know that I've broken the rule. I feel weak and later that day, Ms. Rosario comes by with the principal. You're not in trouble. We'd like to speak with your parents when they pick you up. 
but deep down, I still feel like I'm in trouble. That night, I'm sitting and doing my homework, a worksheet on multiplication. I stare at a question. I know the answer, but I can't focus. I'm busy listening to my parents' mother back and forth in their native tongue, but can't understand what they're saying. There is no punishment. Nothing is said. I wish I had lied to Ms. Rosario. I feel like I have to defend her actions and my father's actions at the same time, but I keep it to myself. I am angry at Ms. Rosario and, it, and, and think about all the things I want to say when I see her. She made things worse. I hold on to this anger for years, but by the time the 10 year anniversary of the incident rolls around, I silently forgive Ms. Rosario. She was right. I can still look down at my hands and arm and see the mark, a crescent black moon, barely visible, swallowed by the color of my own skin. I find myself in a process like other men of color like me, processing. That process is a journey of learning forgiveness, trust, and what my idea of being a father is. I still try to bury feelings that refuse to stay underground. It's gonna high temple. <laughs>